Welcome investors. In this video, I'm going to show you 12 stocks I believe might be worth buying in the current market correction, or to be honest, regardless of if there's a market correction happening or not. The first eight stocks are companies I think are worth buying and holding forever. In my opinion, these are eight of the best companies in the world that consistently compound cash for their shareholders, regardless of market valuations. And the last four will be stocks of smaller companies I believe have huge upside in the short, medium and long term, but also carry a higher risk due to not having such strong competitive advantages like the other eight established players. And that's why they have more upside logically. Also, remember that I will only briefly explain the thesis behind each stock, otherwise the video would be incredibly long. But as the market started to correct a bit last week, I thought it would be nice to give you some ideas of good stocks to research. Let's start right away with Visa, ticker symbol V. Visa is a standout investment choice due to its exceptional financial performance, resilient business model and sustainable competitive advantages. Over the past years, Visa has consistently outperformed the market, as you may see through this graph, and its profitability demonstrated by an operating margin of over 60% and consistent revenue growth underscore its financial strength. Like traditional financial institutions, Visa operates an asset light model, minimizing risk and maximizing stability. By earning revenue mostly through transaction fees rather than interest income, Visa ensures a predictable and profitable revenue stream. Moreover, its global network effects with 4.3 billion Visa cards in circulation and its position at the forefront of the digital payment revolution reinforce its competitive advantages. Despite emerging competitive forces, Visa has proven its resilience and continued growth, making it a compelling long-term investing opportunity. I think everyone agrees that Visa is one of the best and strongest companies in the world and in my opinion that will not change over the next years, not to say decades. And that's why I think Visa will keep yielding above market returns and why I think this is a stock worth buying in any market correction regardless of its valuation, extreme cases aside, obviously. The next one on the list is Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. Amazon is a compelling investment opportunity driven by its robust financial recovery and promising growth prospects. Throughout its history, Amazon has always prioritized investing in growth, a strategy that has propelled it to its current position. Despite facing challenges, for example during the pandemic, the company continued its investment philosophy but at a high cost to its profitability, which led to a significant decline in its stock value. However, Amazon is now leveraging these investments to optimize its operations, resulting in the generation of billions in additional free cash flow for investors. What sets Amazon apart is its diverse revenue streams, including e-commerce, cloud computing with the AWS uh, segments, advertising and much more. These segments establish Amazon as a dominant force across several sectors, offering stability and ample growth opportunities. Moreover, strategic investments in AI integration and expansion initiatives such as same-day deliveries underscore Amazon's commitment to innovation and market leadership. Amazon's uncomparable strength and resilience have long been recognized, with its valuation often sparking debate. Yet, time and again, Amazon has delivered exceptional returns to shareholders, and with ongoing and forthcoming cost-efficiency measures, coupled with the ongoing AI revolution, Amazon is poised to further solidify its dominant position in the global market. For a deeper understanding of Amazon's strategies and initiatives, I highly recommend reading the recent letter wrote by the CEO to shareholders, where he provides comprehensive insights into the company's operations and future direction. The third stock is ASML, ticker ASML. I don't need to talk much about ASML so you can get an idea of why it is a company that will keep winning over the long term. For those of you that don't know, ASML is the world leader in lithography systems which are crucial for manufacturing advanced computer chips. It's virtually a technological monopoly because it's the only company that makes these highly specialized extreme ultraviolet lithography machines. So while the stock may seem expensive, uh, trading at more than 40 times forward earnings, 
Investors are willing to pay a premium because chip makers like Taiwan Semiconductors and Intel, Nvidia, and every chip maker you can think about rely on ASML's machines to produce these cutting edge chips. Analysts expect ASML's revenue growth to be modest in 2024 at around 2%, but it's projected to jump to 27% growth in 2025. ASML's long-term success is underpinned by its technological dominance and strategic growth plans. It aims to significantly increase its revenue by 2030, driven by the increasing demand for high-performance chips, and the company's relentless focus on innovation and its market-leading position make it a compelling investment opportunity for the future, being almost a monopoly in a secular trend that it's now impossible to be stopped. Now we have Ferrari. Ticker symbol R-A-C-E. Ferrari has been a standout performance since its spin-off from Fiat in 2014, delivering over 800% returns to shareholders, an average of over 20% annually. Despite selling only about 10,000 cars per year on average, Ferrari's strategy of artificially restricting supply as fuel demands, resulting in a 24-month waiting list for their cars. Moreover, about 66% of their sales are from repeat customers, highlighting the brand's strong customer loyalty. Ferrari pays close attention to who buys their cars and how they are customized. They take action like sending legal notices if they think someone made a change that might harm their brand image, and this approach, although controversial, sets Ferrari apart in the automotive industry. In terms of market dynamics, Ferrari commands a growing slice of the luxury car market and maintains pricing power because of its exclusivity. With the number of millionaires worldwide doubling in the past decade and expected to rise further, Ferrari's elite status positions it to well capitalize on this. And this is very important because Ferrari isn't just selling cars, it's selling status. From a business perspective, Ferrari's core segments of cars and spare parts, along with sponsorships, commercial activities, and branding, are driving significant revenue growth. Financially, Ferrari has incredible margins and a healthy balance sheet, and despite its premium valuation, Ferrari's record-breaking revenue and profit numbers justify investors' confidence. I've said this before and I repeat, pricing power is at the core of a company's multiples, and Ferrari, in my opinion, must be in the top five of companies in the world with higher pricing power. It will never be possible to buy Ferrari at an attractive valuation, yet it will most certainly keep delivering the best to its shareholders. The fifth stock on the list is Costco, ticker symbol C-O-S-T. Costco is not just another retail giant, it's a growth powerhouse that consistently delivers for investors. With a solid track of expanding its footprint both domestically and internationally, Costco remains a top pick for long-term growth. The company's recent move to increase its quarterly dividend and its substantial stock buybacks show its commitment to rewarding shareholders. Additionally, the success of its new Shanghai location highlights Costco's potential to capture even more market share, especially in the appliance market with its competitive deals and same-day delivery services. Despite trading at the premium, Costco's operational excellence and consistent revenue growth justify its valuation. The company's ability to navigate inflationary pressures while maintaining customer value and loyalty sets it apart in the retail landscape. With strong membership metrics and a growing e-commerce segment, Costco's growth trajectory looks promising. As it continues to focus both on essentials and luxury items, the retailer aims to keep same-store sales gains at the top of the industry as they have always been. Costco's unique business model driven by its membership fees and low price strategy, provides a competitive advantage that few retailers can match, and with millions of loyal members and a high renewal rate, Costco's earnings power remains robust. Now we have Mercado Libre, ticker symbol M-E-L-I. Mercado Libre stands as a seasoned yet dynamically evolving force in Latin America's commercial landscape. Founded over two decades ago, it still looks like a startup with its staggering growth trajectory. With a solid foundation in e-commerce complemented by strategic expansions into finance and advertising, Mercado Libre has firmly established itself as a market leader. Over the past decade, its revenue has increased exponentially, a testament to its smart business strategies and relentless pursuit of innovation. 
often called the Amazon of Latin America, Mercado Libre's distinction lies in its diversified approach with a notable emphasis on fintech solutions alongside its e-commerce power. What sets Mercado Libre apart is its unwavering commitment to cultivating a robust internal culture and attracting top-tier talents. Moreover, its advertising arm, Mercado Ads, has emerged as an insanely profitable revenue stream, contributing to the company's sustained growth. Despite inherent risks such as political volatility and currency fluctuations in certain regions like Argentina, Mercado Libre's vision and market dominance position it as a resilient investment choice for the long term, and while competitors like Amazon and C-Limited pose challenges, Mercado Libre's proven track record and expansive market potential make it a compelling investment opportunity. The recent dip in stock price presents what can be a great entry point for investors, and with its mix of experience, innovation, and market dominance, Mercado Libre remains poised to shape the future of Latin America. Now we have Adobe, ticker symbol ADBE. Adobe might not immediately strike you as an AI powerhouse, but its recent innovations and long-term strategy are making waves in the tech sector. Despite lagging behind in recent stock performance when compared to the other companies with similar or higher size, Adobe is rapidly advancing its AI capabilities, positioning itself as a growth stock worth considering. The company's financial numbers have disappointed investors, with earnings growth stagnating and expenses outpacing sales. However, Adobe's recent Adobe Summit uh, 2024 showcased its commitment to AI integration across its service suites, unveiling innovative projects like the AI Assistant for Acrobat and Reader and Firefly services, which streamline workflows and enhance productivity. Although Adobe faces uh, tough competition and regulatory challenges, its aggressive AI strategy aims to unlock new revenue streams and maintain its competitive edge. When I talk about competition, it might include companies like Canva, for example, that might pose a threat, but Adobe's extensive footprint in enterprise workflows and its differentiated approach to generative AI give it a competitive advantage that works in its favor. By embedding AI features into its products and leveraging proprietary data for model training, Adobe is poised to drive in an increasingly AI-driven landscape. In conclusion, despite short-term challenges, Adobe's long-term vision and strategic investments in AI make it a compelling investment opportunity for patient investors looking to capitalize on a future of digital innovation. And the last of these eight first stocks is Amgen, ticker symbol AMGN. Amgen has faced its fair share of challenges in recent years, with slow revenue growth and regulatory setbacks impacting investor enthusiasm. Despite these hurdles, the company remains a key player in the biotech industry, having a diverse portfolio and a promising pipeline of new drugs. One area where it is uh, trying to make good developments is in the weight loss market, with its promising candidate AMG133 showing meaningful weight loss in phase 1 clinical trials. The company here aims to address the issue of post-treatment durability, a common concern within these uh, weight loss therapies. Additionally, Amgen's acquisition of Horizon Therapeutics for approximately uh, $28 billion uh, improves its portfolio with key assets like Tepedza, I'm not sure if I'm spelling it correctly, a therapy for thyroid eye disease. With this being the first and only treatment for this condition, there's significant growth potential as it reaches more patients. Despite its challenges, Amgen's stock presents a compelling value proposition in my opinion, trading at a relatively attractive valuation when compared to its industry peers. With a consensus analyst price target suggesting considerable upside potential, Amgen remains an intriguing option for investors willing to weather short-term headwinds for long-term gains. This is a company that might be particularly interesting for dividend investors, as right now you can get an above 3% dividend yield with a very nice track record of dividend growth. Finally, let's enter in the four higher risk, higher reward stocks, starting with High Tide, ticker symbol HITI. I'm not going to take much time on this one, as last week I made a full video about why I own high tide shares and why it is my largest position. But basically, 
Founded by Raj Grover, iTithe has emerged as a leader in the cannabis industry with a compelling growth story and a visionary leadership at the core. iTithe's expansion strategy, fueled by acquisitions and organic growth, has solidified its position as a leader in Canada's cannabis retail landscape. What sets iTithe apart is its innovative discount club model, which has enabled the company to rapidly capture market share and maintain competitive pricing. This, combined with its strategic real estate selection and cost management efforts, has fortified its economic modes and contributed to sustained profitability. Despite its strong fundamentals and impressive growth trajectory, High Tide remains undervalued compared to its peers, presenting an attractive investment opportunity. With its expansion plans extending to international markets like Germany and potentially the United States when federally approved, iTide is poised for substantial long-term growth. In summary, iTide represents a compelling investment choice, offering the potential for significant returns. And if you want to learn more about why I believe in iTide, be sure to check out my full video analysis. Now, ins and ers, ticker symbol H-I-M-S. Most of you probably don't know about this, but IMS is my second largest position with an average cost of roughly $8.50 per share. While I'm sitting at very good gains, I still believe that this company will be a multi-bagger over the long term. That's why I'm not selling a single share. IMS and HERS is a telehealth company that primarily targets millennials and Gen Z, offering health solutions in five broad categories. Sexual wellness, hair loss, dermatology, mental health, and weight loss. Millennials and Gen Z, the target audience for IMS, are unique in their preferences, often preferring virtual interactions over in-person ones. This preference for digital healthcare solutions stems from a generation that grew up connected yet isolated, relying on screens for social interactions. As a result, there is a significant demand for telehealth services like those offered by IMS, driven by necessity rather than choice, especially when we consider the categories that IMS offers, which are mostly those that uh, people normally don't feel comfortable talking about. I'm going to make a full video on IMS soon, but I can give you a few reasons why I love this company so much. First, with a history of consistent revenue growth, IMS demonstrates its potential as a reliable compounding machine, even as it transitions to a more sustainable pace. Just so you can have an idea of how incredibly has been its execution, when IMS went public in 2021, analysts were expecting 2024 revenue of $322 million. Today, they expect $1.2 billion in revenue, or 270% above expectations. It's completely mind-blowing and even more when we consider that IMS has just became profitable in the last earnings report and stated that it's expected to remain profitable for the foreseeable future, always looking to enhance margins as it scales up the business. All these achievements were only possible due to its visionary management team, with the founder and CEO Andrew Dedham leading the way and knowing that to build a strong competitive advantage, the company needed to first focus on customer experience versus short-term profits, and now shareholders are getting the benefits from that smart choice. The last thing I want to mention is that the huge problem of IMS has always been customer retention. However, that has been improving now that the company has an AI system called MadMatch that basically personalizes each pills dosage for each of its customers based on their previous medical records and current conditions. This is further strengthening IMS competitive advantage and I expect it to continue to do so. The 11th stock on the list is Transmatics. Transmatics is a company I talked about in my video with uh, three stocks to buy in April and actually since that date it already rose around 30% but I still see potential over the long term. This is also a company I plan to do a full video about, but I'm going to say basically what I said in that previous video. Founded in 1998, Transmatics Group is on a mission to revolutionize organ transplant therapy for patients facing end-stage organ failure. With a commitment to maximizing donor organ utilization and minimizing post-transplant complications, Transmatics has developed the Organ Care System, or OCS, 
and this groundbreaking platform extends organ viability by replicating human body conditions, reducing the risk of complication post-transplantation and having been FDA approved. As a leader in lung, heart and liver transplants, Transmedics is transforming the way organs are preserved and transplanted. However, organ transplantation poses a significant challenge. Traditionally, organs were transported through charter flights, which are expensive and unreliable. Recognizing this bottleneck, Transmedics acquired Summit Aviation in 2023, and this strategic move led to the creation of the national OCS program, streamlining the transplant process and optimizing logistics to increase successful organ transplants and improve patient outcomes. Transmedics recently reported impressive results in the fourth quarter of 2023, projecting revenues of $360 to $370 million for 2024, surpassing the higher end of analyst estimates. This remarkable growth trajectory from just $25 million in revenue in 2020 reflects over two decades of R&D, extensive trials and FDA approvals, now, as they invest in acquiring planes to support the expansion of its operations, Transmatic's competitive advantage is growing at a pace stronger than ever. With a proven track record of exceeding expectations and continuous investment in growth, I believe the company is well positioned to yield fantastic results to its shareholders. Finally, we got to the last stock. If you're still here, thank you so much and please consider leaving a like in the video. At core, ticker symbol ATKR, represents a compelling investment opportunity offering deep value alongside a strong competitive moat. As a manufacturer and a distributor of electrical, safety and infrastructure products, Adcor has solidified its position in the market through several key competitive advantages. Firstly, the company's Adcor business system, heavily influenced by the successful Danaher business system, which for those of you that don't know, it's the business system that Danaher, a giant, a completely giant, uses and that's yielded amazing returns over the past uh, decades. This system drives continuous improvements and innovation throughout the organization. This culture of excellence brought by the former CEO John Williamson positions Adcor for sustained growth and operational efficiency. Furthermore, Adcor's strategic focus on category expansion and innovation coupled with strategic mergers and acquisition has enabled the company to broaden its product portfolio and capture new market opportunities. With a one-stop shop approach, Adcor offers a comprehensive range of products, catering to the diverse needs of its customers and solidifying its market leadership. Additionally, Adcor benefits from low-cost production advantages, particularly in the case of transportation costs. With a vast network of distribution partners and a focus on economies of scale, Adcor maintains a competitive edge against its peers, driving profitability and market share growth. Despite the windfall profits experienced during the pandemic, Adcor's management has always demonstrated prudence in their financial guidance, under-promising and over-delivering on expectations. The company's focus on organic growth, supported by secular tailwinds such as the electrification of the world, grid hardening, digital infrastructure, etc., underscores its potential for long-term success. Looking ahead, Adcor is well positioned to capitalize on these macro trends, supported by government initiatives and infrastructure investments. With a prudent capital allocation strategy, including share buybacks and the initiation of a quarterly dividend, Adcor remains committed to creating value for its shareholders and trading at about 12 times free cash flow, I believe it is quite cheap when considering its future prospects. That's all for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you own any of these stocks in the comments down below. Remember that the first eight stocks are from companies I believe will keep having a dominant position in their markets. And so regardless of valuation, uh, will probably yield great results to its shareholders, while the last four are smaller and riskier companies, but that in my opinion will also have a great future, especially because all of them have uh, remarkable management teams that are really making the difference. Thanks for watching again. See you in the next one.